environments for higher order functions. We've reached a very exciting moment in the course. I told you about this nifty feature of Python higher order functions in last lecture. This is actually a feature of many, many programming languages because it's just a good idea. And now, and I also told you about environments and environment diagrams. And you might have wondered, what was all that about? Well, now we see these two things come together because environments are really there to enable higher order functions. So what's a higher order function again? It's a function that takes a function as an argument value or returns a function as a return value. So functions that manipulate other functions are higher order functions. Now, I've told you rules for evaluating call expressions and def statements, etc. Now we're going to understand how they extend to higher order functions. What if we pass in a function as an argument? It turns out the rules I've already told you already handle this case. We will look at an example. What happens when functions return values that are also functions? Well, it turns out that we need to extend our rules a little bit. So everything I told you still applies, but we're going to make parts of it more precise because we'll figure out that functions need to know where they were defined in order to execute correctly. But almost everything stays the same. So what you learned about environments is still true, and we're just going to look at the rest of the details right now. Let's start with some examples. All right, so I'm going to define a function called apply twice, which takes another function and an argument x, and it returns the result of applying f to f of x. So that's why it applies it twice. So it applies f to x and then applies f to whatever the result of f of x is. Um, so let's also add in our handy square function x times x and we'll start an interpreter where apply twice and square are both loaded. So square does what we think, it squares numbers and apply twice, square two, we'll square true to get four and then square four to get 16. Now notice exactly what I typed here. I called apply twice. I named the function square. So square is an expression that evaluates to this function. And that's what I passed in as the parameter called f. Uh, apply twice also works with built-in functions from math import square root. Apply twice square root of 16. So the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, so square rooting twice starting with 16 gives us 2. Let's look at the environment diagram. Okay, apply twice f of x. Return f of f of x, there's a square function, and then we'll store the result of applying twice square to 2 in a name called result. Okay. So first we execute the def statement. Nothing has been applied yet. All we've done is create a function. We'll also create the square function. So now the names apply twice and square are available and we use them both here. So we get apply twice, we apply it to the values square and two. So there's a frame for apply twice. F is bound to square, X is bound to two, and we execute the body of that function, which means then we execute square. So we square two and we get back four, and then we square four and we get back 16. 16 is returned from here. It's the value of this entire return expression, which means it will be returned here and then bound to the name result. Result is 16. Okay, there was a critical moment in that progression. Let's look at it. So here we were, we had defined apply twice and we had defined square. And then we called apply twice on square and two. So we want to evaluate this call expression 
the operator evaluates to a function, the first operand evaluates to a function, and the second operand evaluates to two. Then we call this function, which is the value of the operator, on the two operands, one happens to be a function. This is the function we're actually applying. It's called apply twice. So how do we do that? Well, we create a new frame. In fact, we do three different things. We create a new frame, we bind the formal parameters of the function we're calling to its arguments that were passed in, and then we execute the body. Okay, so the formal parameters are f and x, and the arguments that we passed in are the squaring function there, and the number two. So here we see we've bound in this frame the formal parameter f to the squaring function, that's what this arrow means, and x is bound to two. Okay, now we execute the body, which we haven't done yet. So our little marker that tells us what we're about to do next is pointing to this line, meaning we're about to take f of f of x. Now when we evaluate f of f of x, what environment do we do it in? It's the environment that starts with the frame we just created, and then is followed by the global frame. So when we look up the name f, we're going to look first in this frame, and then in the global frame. We only look in the global frame if we don't find it in the local frame. So when we look up what f means, we look here, we find the name f, which is what we were looking for, and we realize that it means the function that squares. And that's why in the rest of the example, the square function was called twice, even though here it was called f. So functions are values. They can be passed in as arguments, just like anything else, just like the number two. What does it mean to pass something in? Well, what really happens is that uh, in this new frame that's created, when you call apply twice, the formal parameter f, which you find here in the function, is bound to the thing you passed in. That's what it means to pass it in. It's just to give it a new name that's local to this frame. Names can refer to functions, just as they can refer to any value, and we can have multiple different names that all refer to the same function, even in different frames. So we have square refer referring to this function, and we have f referring to this function at the same time, and that's not a problem.